Hello friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional. Thanks for joining me on this Wednesday. Normally we have the Wednesday night Bible study, but we're not going to have the in-person Bible study because it's the week between Christmas and New Year's, and specifically, I'm taking this week off. Now, you may be wondering why am I still here, and that is, I still do my devotions when I'm not serving as pastor for the week. And so, I'm just sharing it with you. And today I was reading from Ephesians chapter 4 and thinking about the Christian life and why should the Christian life be different than any other life. Let's talk about that on Something Deeper. So Ephesians 4 describes the life without God that's full of impurity and greed and then Life changes once you give your life to Jesus Christ. And one question would be, how is this different than the idea of a works religion where you're saved by doing good works? And I think there's a a glaring difference. One is that the temporal and causal order is reversed. You can't be good enough to earn your salvation. You're just not good enough. And so, If you try to earn your salvation by your good works, it either leads to failure and giving up, or it leads to faking it and hypocrisy, where you just pretend that you're good enough. And neither one gets you closer to God. In fact, both of them take you further away. But when you do give your life to God, He changes you. And so not only do you have a new reason to do the right thing, but you have a new power. Your surrender to Jesus Christ allows His Spirit to flow into you, and and it changes you. Ephesians 4 talks about it like putting on a new garment. You're putting on a new personality, a new self. And so, verse 20 and following says this, That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ, and were taught in Him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of the body, one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anybody who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. So, you see, once you do give your life to Christ, it's not earning your salvation with good works, but once you do give your life to Christ, you want to please him. And so there's a a desire to do the right thing, not because you're afraid of punishment or because you're afraid you'll lose your salvation or anything else, but just because God has done so much for me, why would I not want to do good for Him? And and I want to be right. I want to be correct in my life. I want to be a person that blesses my own life and blesses other people's lives. And you can only do that when you follow God's plan for your life. When you do that, you're not dysfunctional, you're functional, and and you bless others. And it comes out in a million different ways, like not lying to your neighbor, um, not being angry, or, or at least not sinning in your anger. Anger itself is not sin, but it can sure lead to some sin. And one of the, re- one of the ways you don't let anger lead you into sin is to keep accounts short. If you're angry about something legitimately, use that energy that anger brings to do something about it. Go and reconcile. Go and work it out. Otherwise, you give the devil a foothold. And when you live your life in sin, the devil has a foothold, and he can go from that point further into your life, and he can pollute more and more and more of it. He can make your whole life impure. Why do we want that? We don't. And so when we come to Jesus... He changes us, and we want to be changed. 
so we don't steal, but instead we, we try to do something useful with our hands so we can not only provide for our own needs, but help others as well. Ephesians 4 then goes on with more instructions. Do not let it, any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So, we've got to be careful how we talk to others. And, and I think that includes how we, how we comment to others online. Because it's so easy to hide behind a keyboard and say something nasty to other people. But that's not what we're called to. We're called to build people up, not to tear them down. Verse 30 says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Some people just are angry all the time. That's not the life that Christ wants for you or for the people around you that you're angry at. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. So when we give our life to Christ, we take on his personality and think about Jesus who forgave so much, Jesus who had so much compassion. You may have reason to be angry at others. You may have reason to be red hot. But in Jesus, you can let it go. We want to put on Christ because we've been given a new life. Why would we want that old one? What good did that old life do for you? But when you come to Jesus, everything's new. Let's live up to that newness. And, and we may not be perfect in that, but that's okay. Our salvation isn't depending on it. It flows from our salvation. It doesn't earn our salvation. And so let's t- put off that old self and put on a new self that is being renewed every day. And we can presume more and more in our life will become more and more like Jesus. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for the new life you give to us. Our good works are not a a gift that we give to you. They're a gift you give to us, the ability to have a different life. Thank you for the power that transforms us. We want to be like Jesus, Father. Thank you for your help. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you all. I hope you have a great night, and we will see you tomorrow, Lord willing. Take care.